So I posted in this group um, on Facebook in Mexico just asking for some, if anyone has gear for cycling trip. And this guy's just commented, I can only give you one tip, don't do that. Oh, quite dire. Quite dire. And then he goes on to say, in quite a long string of comments, a lot of people disappear in Mexico every day and nobody cares. I have experienced several murders in my immediate past environment in the past four years and therefore I give a very clear warning. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any good comments about Mexico? Yeah, there's a lot of bad ones, but this one's nice. Based on five months of cycling the country from north to south, I would not hesitate to tell anybody with even the slightest itch for adventure to do it. That's all I need to know. I think we should do it. Alicia, you can call me Ish. I'm from New Zealand, not Australia. I'm about to ride my bicycle with Ali Denim across Mexico for five weeks. My longest bike ride ever? I don't really know. I mean, I did spend a whole day biking around San Francisco one time. That was pretty fun. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to having a challenge, like a physical challenge, because I've just been drinking beer and being a backpacker for six months. <laughs> you literally have a shirt that says free for those runners. I do, yeah. <laughs> Free beer. <laughs> Ish will need to buy a second hand bike while we're in San Cristobal. So it's going to be a mountain bike. It'll have a suspension fork for comfort. There'll be wide tires with lots of tire tread. She'll also need to buy a dry bag. I think we can get a dry bag from Walmart of all places, as well as a sleeping bag. One of the most important aspects of maintaining a good cycling speed will be to make sure that Ish is carrying the minimum possible equipment. So our aim is to get her complete setup under 17 kilograms. My plan is to get a gel seat cover and just use the existing seat that comes with the bike. I normally don't recommend these. They tend to move around a lot and they put pressure in places where you don't really want it. But in the short term, I think it'll be a really, really good solution. I'm really impressed that you're even starting this journey because 2,000 kilometres on a bicycle without ever really having that experience before is pretty courageous and most people don't even make it to the start line. They just talk about it their whole lives doing this kind of thing. So you should be really proud of yourself for even just signing up for this. Thank you, Ali. And yeah. Well, you talked me into it, didn't you? You totally <laughs> convinced me, and you didn't even try that hard. <laughs> How does it feel? Oh, you got suspension. Nice. You've been on the ordinary drive. I can see that you've been trying to make it on your own It's all you've ever known The time moves slowly Always such a solitary one I'm most excited to show Ish what the life of a bike traveler is. I've been talking about it non-stop since we met and it's just time for her to experience it. Honestly, I don't have any expectations about what it's going to be like. I'm just a purely a blank slate. I don't, yeah, I don't have any expectations. I just expect to maybe have some fun. As Ish is a beginner cyclist, we're not going to be doing big days to start off with. We'll be doing shorter days with lots of rest. We'll make sure that Ish 
stretches as much as possible and has the best opportunity to recover. The most important thing is that we just get Isha's body conditioned for what we're about to do. I'm going to be teaching Isha some very important cycling skills for this adventure. The first will be how to take a turn. So we're going to be starting our corners nice and wide, closing in on the apex of the turn and then finishing out wide. We're going to be doing all of our heavy braking before the turn because if you do hard braking in the middle of a corner, it is much easier to crash. We're going to be following the tire tracks on the soft muddy roads up in the mountains because that tends to be the most grippy and smooth section of the road. Ish will learn how to use all 27 of her gears on this trip just based on how steep the road gradient is, how rough the road sections are and how strong the headwinds are. I'm also planning on teaching Ish about pedaling cadence or the pedaling speed as I've found that a pedaling cadence of around 90 rpm reduces the muscle fatigue in my legs as well as the strain on my neck and back and this allows me to sustainably keep up long distances on the bike day after day after day. So I think Ish will really, really benefit from that. I think it'll be different to being a backpacker in the way that you don't your experience isn't curated by tourism like you're just going to be we're just going to be going through like the tiniest towns in Mexico that have never seen a tourist and in that way it's going to be a lot more pure than like the backpacking experience where you go from town to town by shuttle or maybe if you're adventurous by bus chicken bus the biggest challenge for Ish is going to be if the conditions turn really, really bad. Lots of rain or lots of mud or lots of snow, but it'll be a challenge that will be worth going through. Starting to get dark now and we've just asked the people in this tiny town where the best place to camp is and they've sent us down this muddy path to a river. So let's hope it's beautiful. Hey, look at it. It's gorgeous here. Are you Not bad at all. I reckon I could camp here. If you twist my arm, I'll do it. <laughs> it's got some flow. Woo! Adios. Adios. We're using bike pumps today to make coffee. I've been lost in the fine storm. Tonight I'm seeing dark. Oh yeah. Long lights together. Sweet, sweet chocolatey aroma. So long. Scared the shore. Beautiful espresso shot. We'll turn it into a long black. Thank you. Oh, chasing on. We won't find it alone. Now I know I love it. I can't believe I lost it. Shadow on the surface fades into the moon. simplicity of bike travel makes me feel really peaceful I'm not sure that that's the right word but I feel calm and I feel that it's it's a soothing way to live like there's no stress there's, there's nothing to be worried about you're just worried about finding a great campsite which we always do and then the next day you don't have to plan anything you're just like cool we get up and we eat and we ride our bikes in beautiful locations and we have beautiful interactions and the simplicity of that means that there's no you don't have to worry about anything you just get to enjoy every moment of it. Just how much you used to It's a wet day timetable today, so it's a little bit sad. But 
Bien, vamos. No, no. Uh. <laughs> Más vamos. It's going in my face. It has been so incredible camping and cycling through Mexico in comparison to the rest of Central America because the landscapes are much bigger, they're much bolder, there's fewer cars on a lot of the smaller back roads. I just feel such an incredible sense of freedom here. I love that we're so secret. No one ever knows that we're there, so we're so sneaky. Also, my, one of my favourite parts is finding it. So when you've found the spot and you're like, yeah, this is absolutely it. We're going to have a sunrise, we're going to have sunset, there's no bugs here, there's water. And just that moment where you're setting up the tent and you're like, yeah, this is it, we've nailed it. I think I've spotted a good campsite. Ooh, where? Right here. I can't believe Well, maybe I'm still so... If I'm honest, it doesn't really get much better than this. Right on the top of a little hill. Bit muddy. A little bit muddy, innit? Where are you from? I'm from Scotland. Scotland? I be Glasgow. Glasgow? Glasgow. Do you like the mud? I like the mud. I like it deep and thick. I like it dirty on me legs. Oh. And on me bike. On your dirty jiny. Dirty jiny. Oh gosh. Are we okay? about your bicycle woes today? I've had many a woe today on my bikey. Um, very dirty road, very sandy, very muddy, very gritty. Chain does not like that. Can't really change Keeps gear. getting sucked into the crank set. Literally, just, just does not want to change <laughs> Rear gears. Rear gears don't work. <laughs> <laughs> and right, what just happened? Super noisy. And one of my straps on my bag just fell off and got caught in my rear wheel. This bad boy from this bad boy got caught in this bad boy. And while I was going down a hill and got wound so tight that it's silly. See, see it's more fuerte aquí. So it's stuck here and it's pulled my fully bent the rock. a very good commercial for the belt drivetrain with a roll-off rear hub. As usual, just working flawlessly. just happened. Nothing. What happened? Stripped it in the wheel again! How? I don't know! Why weren't you careful? Oh, it's bloody beaten again! I, I know! <laughs> it's so cooked! <laughs> Yeah.
Hey. Hey. I've got a very important lesson to teach you. Oh god, what which is, is it? just a bike touring classic. Please, look at me. Take the camera. Okay. So dirty towel. Put it on the ground. Put it in half. Okay. Wet cycling shorts. Oh. Into the towel. Ooh. Very tight roll. Stand on it. Yep. For like one minute, maybe two. Check if it's as dry as you'd like. If not, go to the other end of the towel. Ooh. You might be a genius. Did you know this trick? No idea. Oh. Yeah. Try next film. Wow. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> it's even better than before. Yep. There's an ocean inside my head. Waves that don't ever. This kind of beauty ain't ordinary You look but do you really see Won't you take your time on me Cause we got The mindset I take on before a hard day of cycling I don't even have a mindset I'm just so stoked to be here and I'm just looking forward to every minute of every day I think that even if a day specifically is not 100% good, it'll be at least 1% good. And so I try to look forward to kind of finding those moments in the day. has been handling the first few weeks incredibly well. I'm so impressed with her. She's a really intuitive learner. There's so many aspects of cycling that I haven't had to explain to her. She has just followed by example and I'm just so impressed. Ish actually hasn't made too many mistakes. There have been a few crashes that we've had to deal with, which are normally just silly little rider errors that a really experienced cyclist wouldn't make, but it's totally fine to do as a beginner. Some of them have been associated with using a little bit too much front brake when descending down steep hills, but also just not picking the perfect line down the steep clay roads that we've been cycling. My baby, what's up? Uh, just a little slippy slip in the mud. Is yep. this crash four now? It is crash four. What, what happened? Um, I went over the handlebars again. You went over the bars? How do you go over the bars? I don't know, I must have jumped. <laughs> Show um, us your back. Can you see my skid mark? I want to see your back. Oh my gosh. Is it dirty? No, but it's on the shirt that doesn't look no. dirty when it's dirty. <laughs> it's great. Okay, yeah, I just slipped. My back wheel just... Oh, there's my skid mark. Oh, you did a skid. Yeah. Might be the front wheel. Oh, one of them. 50 <laughs> 50. Hey, just clean that leg! <laughs> just doing some crime scene investigation at the moment and you'll notice just here are my tyre marks up a little bit higher are Isha's tyre marks and she's on the slippery bit of the road where it's very easy to hit a ridge and slip out I feel attacked <laughs> What have we got here? This is tehate. It's a Oaxacan drink that you can only get in this state. And it's so good. And it's made from four things. So it's toasted maize, toasted mamey pits, which is a fruit, fermented cacao beans, and the flower of cacao. What's it like? So good. Mm. What's the texture? It's like creamy. And then this is like a buttery on the top. So good. Mm. This one here is a tamale with a small plant called 
ชาพิลสตรีทามาเล่ is corn flour so starchy it's good delicious so And we have one more with beans as well yeah yeah There's not a lot of wildlife in the desert, to be honest. Um, but we have seen lots of turkeys, like a crazy amount of wild turkeys, and they make so much noise. Donkeys, which are my new favorite animal, the hee hawing sound is actually ridiculous. We've had really curious cows coming right up to our tent, sniffing it, licking it, and in one, on one occasion, coming right up to my bike and trying to eat my helmet and eat my roll mat. Hello. Hey, that's my helmet. Hey, that's my sleeping mat. Hey, that's my rubbish bag for my sleeping mat. Don't eat that. Hey, that's also mine. Don't eat that either. I need all that. Mexican people have been so incredibly friendly to us. We've been invited into people's houses on two different occasions already. People are handing us fruit like crazy. They're giving us advice in terms of directions and places to stay and places to camp. In general, everybody's so friendly and they're always looking out for us. Sometimes the spark, you know how sweet the glow that kicks you off your line. One of the biggest questions around doing this journey is the perceived danger in Mexico. I don't want to play it down at all. I know that you know people do get murdered, they do get robbed. The thing is, and it, it applies to almost all dangerous countries that I've travelled through. You just need to keep a constant dialogue with the local people in order to find out where the dangerous areas are, what the risks are, and whether you're going to be okay as a Western traveler moving through those areas. We need to talk about what? your sleeping bruises. I have sleeping bruises. So my sleeping mat is so thin that I wake up in the night in pain because I have developed bruises on the spots where I sleep. So my hips, my back, and my shoulders it wakes me up. Okay. Because I feel sorry for you, Aww. tonight you are going to get the 512 baffle wow. dual air chamber. Dual. Royal mattress. Royal mattress. Thoughts? I get the royal mattress! But, That's very exciting. But... Okay. Oh, it's here. Uh, I want this. You can have my one dollar pillow. pillow. Well, 
Tell us what happened. So we were flogging it up this road and then this huge truck comes past and he stops to tell us that um, it's dangerous ahead because there are two groups of people fighting over the land up ahead and there was a guy that was killed three or four months ago in the dispute. And we're not so sure we we're, we're debating whether we're going to be a target. Yeah. We've been convinced that we need to turn around. Just spoken to this guy who's filling up his truck with rocks and he said that nobody is allowed in and that the indigenous people are hiding in the bushes and shooting people with bows and arrows. They don't speak any Spanish so we probably can't talk our way out of either. So we'll turn around and create another route. What did he say to you? So he said that the, I asked him how long it's been going on, the problem with the conflict, and he said it's been going on forever. And I said, what do you think the problem is? And he said, those people don't think, they don't talk, they don't listen, they just shoot. And then he mimed bow and arrow. I know, I was like, not with a gun? And he said, no, bow and arrow. Oh, pretty primitive. turn around and this is in the middle of the desert it was really hot um, and the road was just made of dust it was completely made of dust and it was really steep and no part of it was smooth it was crazy it was yeah and it was a more than a 14 kilometer hill straight up in the searing heat and in the dust it was so hard <laughs> but it was fun So hitting the sealed road after riding on dirt for so long, it felt good, but it kind of felt like cheating. I'm not going to lie. It felt like, oh, I want to go back to the dirt roads because it's way more crazy and there's less trucks and, and cars. I've been loving so much about the highways in Mexico is the progress that we've been making. Up in the mountain roads, we're doing 50, 60, maybe 70 kilometers a day. And we can essentially do the same distance, but in less than half the time. Every time I jump on the highway, I'm actually not sad. I'm quite happy. I'm a person that knows myself quite well, but what I've realized, I think, is that I need to do more stuff like this in my life. I need to include 
way more adventure, which I already knew, but this has really solidified that for me. And I really need to buy a bike and uh, get a touring bike and do this more. <laughs> Sit out there in the covering In the baskings of a holy night And I was lucid and conscious And hovering like a firefly My mind stretched out on the canopy It put its arms out slow And I heard the whispers of silence Floating down 4013. No big deal. I'm quite cool. I don't know if you knew. Do you feel like crazy high altitude though? Do I feel like it's high right now? I mean, it's a pretty big mountain there, so not really, but we can still go higher. <laughs> <laughs> but is this the highest you've ever been? On a bicycle? Yep. It's pretty impressive. It's quite good. Yep. Quite good. Stoked on yourself? Dope. <laughs> Is that for all the fans? You like that? Love it. A life in the ecstasy of rock and roll. to complete a big bike journey like this. It doesn't feel real actually. It kind of feels like we just started the other day and we've just been riding our bikes and then here we are in Mexico City <laughs> a month later. It feels really good though. I had a really good time. Um, but I also feel really sad because I feel really sad that it's over and um, now I have to kind of go back to the real world. Yeah.